Order is not always what it seems. Where the Jedi courted power, the Sith lusted after it. Where the Jedi believed they knew the truth, the Sith possessed it. The power of the dark side is an illness that no true Sith would wish to be cured of. This is the dark side's true allure. Let it in, embrace, accept, conquer. Leslie Headland has told us we're not supposed to know what's going on in the Acolyte. The trailer was very vague, we don't yet know too much about the characters, and even the first scene of the trailer tells the younglings and us the audience, we cannot trust our eyes for they deceive us. So much of what we think we know about the Acolyte is pure speculation, and one of the biggest points of contention over the last couple of days is who is the mysterious Sith at the end of the trailer who confronts the Jedi, the person who, based on the plot rumours, has taken Amanda Stenberg's character May the Assassin under his wing, but even this, we cannot know for sure. Nonetheless, this is definitely a Sith-oriented show, so who is this? Who is going to be the big bad of the Disney Plus series hiding in the shadows? Well, I think based on this time period, what we know, or should I say don't know in canon, as well as some of the earliest reports, it's going to be someone we don't expect, a new character. However, I believe this character has a massive connection to someone we do know. Let me explain. What we know for sure is the Acolyte Season 1 is far too early in the timeline for young Palpatine. Even Plagueis, if they go off Legends, is still a teenager. I mean, they could alter his age for Disney canon. The most familiar Sith around at this time would be Darth Tenebris, the Bith. There is so much potential in Disney canon for that acknowledgement. His name is canon thanks to the Rise of Skywalker Visual Dictionary, but his story is a blank slate, and if they do bring him into live action in the Acolyte, they could change a lot of things, including his species. But from what we've heard, the Sith in this show are new, and this goes back to very early reports. What was stated very early on is that while the Acolyte isn't preoccupied with focusing on them, there is some allusion to familiar Sith, and this could be in the form of holocrons and flashbacks, explaining to the audience Bane's rule of two, and there is one character called Quimia, played by Manny Jacinto, who as a smuggler seems like the most likely person to possess a Sith holocron. But in terms of the main villain, there were rumblings of some kind of connection to the lineage that will lead to Darth Sidious, so this character with a codename that was literally just Paul could be one of Darth Tenebris' first apprentices. The rumour stated there is a connection, without him directly being either of these. And the other pressing question is how are the Jedi going to react? Well, it might not register that this guy is a Sith. Red lightsaber doesn't always equal Sith. But even if they do figure it out, the Jedi Order, knowing their actions, are probably going to stage a cover-up, pretend it never happened. But the Sith at this time have to be very discreet. They don't come out of hiding until later in the timeline when the time is right. As I said, there is so much unknown. Who do you think the Sith is going to be? And something I really want to see in this show is some true Sith wisdom. This series has a massive opportunity to give the audience a more intimate and detailed understanding of the nature of the dark side of the Force. Both George Lucas and Dave Filoni in the Clone Wars series did a great job of exploring this to some degree with Count Dooku and Palpatine, and books like the Legends novel Darth Plagueis has some of the best Sith philosophy in all of the franchise. But now it's time to expand this, this time from the point of view of the Sith during the High Republic. The showrunner Leslie Headland has said some pretty controversial things, but one thing she's right about is the way the dark side seduces its practitioners. The Acolyte in this series did not intend to go down the route of darkness. I think based on the leaks, she wanted to get even, wanted to get revenge over the Jedi who took her sister to be trained. Remember that they're twins. And while the Skywalker saga put emphasis on the Jedi being the good guys, they're now being portrayed as the bad, exposing the way they kidnap four sensitive children and the grief of the families who are left childless. And George once said, the only way to overcome the dark side is through discipline. The dark side is pleasure, he said, temporary and easy to achieve, because you're giving power to destructive desires like hate, anger, revenge, and allowing them to cause unbalance, and the suffering becomes addictive. George contrasted this with the light side by stating, it's difficult to achieve and a great challenge, but its rewards are everlasting joy. But now, my dear friends, some more comments by Leslie about the most controversial decision she made on the series. 
something we spoke about two years ago, having a writer in the writer's room who had never seen a single Star Wars movie, and now she's justifying it and giving her perspective. And you're gonna see why context is so important. Here's what she says. I just thought it'd be good to have the perspective of a person that had literally never seen Star Wars until she was in the room. And she said to me, why do you want me in the room? I've never seen Star Wars. I have no idea. I think there's a dog in it, but I don't know anything. And I was like, first of all, you're an incredible writer. And that's why I want you here. I want you to be questioning the narrative. I don't want myself, who's a lifelong fan, to just be relying on particular references in order to create emotional beats. I want those emotional beats to be earned and checked by someone that isn't super familiar with it. And it was funny because she finally watched the original trilogy over that Christmas. So essentially, my dear friends, most of those in the writer's room are diehard Star Wars fans. But she wanted an outside voice, an outside perspective, not focusing on the Star Wars aspects, but criticizing and questioning the actual TV show side of it, the story in its rawest form, not the deep lore or anything like that, just fundamentally the story and the narrative and what keeps it ticking what makes it interesting. I think this does make a lot of sense, having a broad array of experience, and it was just one of the writers, it wasn't most of them. So that is the context. And so now my dear friends, staying on the same subject, a new rumor states, Disney and Lucasfilm are hoping The Acolyte is going to replace Mando as the primary flagship series on Disney+. Plus. Now given how popular Mando was back in 2019 when season one first aired, and compare that to the initial fan reaction for The Acolyte, Nothing is certain, but it doesn't look as though that's going to be the case. Nonetheless, they've already got three seasons mapped out, and Leslie Headland is already preparing for the second season. She knows the story, she knows where it's leading. There is no doubt, The Acolyte is one of the bigger swings, one of the bigger risks that Lucasfilm is taking with the Star Wars franchise going forward. While The Mandalorian originally began as being almost distinct from the Jedi-filled galaxy of the Skywalker saga, it slowly began to encompass some more familiar aspects of the universe. But Kathleen Kennedy acknowledged there is only so much you can do with this. And so for the Lucasfilm president, the Acolyte is an opportunity to quote, mix things up a bit, driving Star Wars in a brand new direction as part of the High Republic initiative. A century before The Phantom Menace is certainly going to be very distinct, with a very different feel to it and different sort of characters. Teasing multiple seasons, Leslie Headland said this, we definitely have a timeline, a lot of ideas, and we've known very early on where the season is going to go. The conflict's happening, and here is the big bit, specifically what you're going to see in season two. She also acknowledges how important the fan reaction is going to be, because that is going to indicate the way in which season two plays out, if it does. I, for one, am giving it a chance. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. May the force be with you, always.